everybody, welcome back to another episode of uh, Museum News. Uh, today we're going to go all over the Southern California Railway Museum. We're going to talk to some people. We're going to see some stuff. So well, let's go. So hey, we're here in the uh, the Orange Grove at the Southern California Railway Museum with Fred Nikas. Fred has been in charge of this thing for how long have you been taking care of the orange trees here, Fred? Yeah, Fifteen years or thereabouts. Okay, so uh, tell, tell us tell us a story about the uh, orange groves, if you would, please. Well, it was started probably 25 or 30 years ago when the grading for the Y here, they had an extra amount of dirt, so they built a mound here, and then somebody came up with the idea to plant the orange grove, because at that point in time, our name was Orange Empire, and we derived our name from what is now the Inland Empire, which is was the Orange Empire, so hence we planted the trees. And probably 15 years ago, they were in dire need of some help, been neglected, and I said, I'm either gonna make them green or I'm gonna tear them out, because I couldn't stand to look at them. And they're green, and I like them. Uh, I like the area here. I think it's important that when our volunteers drive in, that they come through something that's nice. Makes a much better attitude, feel like you want to do something as opposed to weed patch. And the crop, I probably get uh, 150 bushels of oranges a year off of it. It's all giveaway. Members take it, I give it away. So, then the good oranges. So how much uh, how much time do you have to put into this uh, on a monthly uh, time frame? From Christmas to Easter, two days a week. Okay, well, that's, that's that's a lot of effort there. From Easter to July, a day a week. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> and from July to Thanksgiving, probably a half a day a week. So, so you're so you're busy with this thing all the time, then, yeah? All year. It's yeah. a it's a year long project and depending on how much rain we get on how many weeds we get. This yeah, this year, year we got this was a bumper four, crop. four years worth of rain in four months, yeah. <laughs> it was a bumper crop yeah. for everybody. Oh yeah. And, uh, so, uh, and part of it, uh, I have a, a deal with a rock yard in which we get uh, rock products here, ballast, and I deliver oranges when oranges in season, they get two bushels a week. So we're trading oranges for rocks. I think well, that's, that's, a that's, that's, a, that's a pretty good deal. I yeah. think that's a good oranges deal. Oranges for rocks, yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh yeah, Fred, if uh, somebody wants to, um, to help you volunteer. Contact me. There's okay. always work to do in there. The, from New Year's to Easter, I'm picking and pruning. And from Easter to Fourth of July, I'm weeding. Trees get fed three times a year. That goes on, so it's always something. Well, thanks, Fred. Thanks for all your effort out here. Thanks for talking us to us, talking it's, to us today. It's been a pleasure out here. It's fun. I, I enjoy the enjoy the orange grove. It's it's, uh, it's a mind builder. It's a body builder. <laughs> well, we'll check back with you in a couple of months. Okay, very good. So we're here in Carhouse Four with Gary Freeholds. Standing in front of the uh, Ventura County Number Two steam locomotive. So, uh, Gary, so what? What can you tell us? What's What's been going on with VC2 now? We, though, for the last past year, have been engaging in what's called a 15-year teardown. Okay. And with the 15-year teardown, the various components are removed from the locomotive. Mm -hmm. We're cleaning many of them right now. Okay. From rust and debris that's caught onto it and actually testing components for structural integrity, which is a big deal. Doing some sonic testing and so forth on it. And okay. we are about halfway through now. We've got it mostly torn down, but a steam locomotive has steam and pressure in it. So with pressure comes power, but also the danger that if oh, yeah, that's, you have a, structural a bomb, failure, yeah, it's a potential yeah, bomb, you yeah. have a bomb. Right, yeah. So, uh, Components, the flues, uh, the various pipes that take the steam from the firebox to the boiler, and then as it works its way through to what we call the superheaters that take the, the initial steam and then actually jack it up to a higher, drier temperature. And then finally it works its way down to the pistons. Okay. So we've been taking many, many components apart, pipes, railings, uh, plates, covers for pistons, and 
you have to label them very carefully because once you take, it's easy enough to take something apart, but you have Putting to put it, back it together. Back together. Yeah, that's, yeah. So we're very careful in labeling our parts. Uh, Jeff Lamb and Brian Smith are the two uh, supervisors that really understand the components of the steam locomotive. So they are guiding us and many of the activities such as sanding and removing parts are fairly remedial but it reminds you of the very labor-intensive nature of steam locomotives. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, I mean, that's why they got rid of them in the first they, place. Yeah, yeah. After you work on a steam locomotive, you understand why the diesels took over. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So if uh, somebody wanted to volunteer, uh, who would they contact? Daniel Parks okay. uh, is the person that introduced right. me. He handles a lot of the new members, okay. and so, Brian Smith. So they could, so they could go to the bookstore and say they wanted to talk to Daniel Parks or Brian Smith. And they'd get, yeah. Okay. Those two names, you'll get a phone number and you can contact them. Well, thank you. Well, John, it's my pleasure. Thank my, you. Yeah, and we'll check back with you uh, probably in another month. Okay. Right. Thanks for talking to us today. Sure thing. Okay, bye. We are in the Archive Building at the Southern California Railway Museum, and we're in here with Terry. Terry, what have, uh, you, we, we hear you've got some exciting new uh, acquisitions. You want to tell us about it? Yes. Uh, recently, we were donated the archives of the Los Angeles Railroad Heritage Foundation. Once that they, were, they were once located in Eagle Rock, and uh, they came to a point where I think uh, nobody was visiting their archive and, they, and, the, and the rent got to be a little pricey. So uh, thanks to their board of directors, they donated their whole collection to us. This is just a little bit of it here. We got a lot of wall art. Pretty cool. Yeah. We ended up getting a, a bunch of information, uh, well, uh, archives, pictures, uh, old calendars, um, even a section on McKean cars, quite a bit of material on McKean cars, rare cars. In, in any event, yes, uh, right now it's, we're in the process now, it's, we've got it in safe storage and we're going to spread it out around the museum to where people can see this wonderful stuff. Oh, that's great, yeah. We can, that's always a welcome addition to the walls out here because things are looking kind of dull in the in town hall and in the Harvey, Harvey house. Even in the bookstore, we could use some more wall art. They know. had a spectacular archive, and uh, now now we're going to end up using it to make our museum look considerably better. Well, that's great. Uh, do you have anything else that's come along, or is this this what you're working well, on right uh, now? Well, we continually have um, stuff come in. Okay. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to go and, and pick up someone else's collection. Uh, I understand that's mostly books, and... and uh, uh, but things keep going around here. It's hard to keep this place. As soon as we clear out something, uh, space in here, something comes in to fill it up immediately. Oh, that, that's, that's the case all, everywhere in the museum. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yep. <laughs> we do have a space problem here. <laughs> well, thank you, Terry. And thanks thank for Thank you for taking some time to talk with us. All right. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks, Terry. So we are here in the Middleton Collection at the Southern California Railway Museum. We're going to talk with Dave Wolven here about what we what we have in here. So, Dave, uh, tell us the story of this Middleton collection. Okay, the Middleton collection was created by Mr. Evan Middleton. He had the toy train house at Knott's Berry Farm until 1969, and uh, Knott's Berry Farm was free entry, so people could go right, buy right, yeah. Lionel trains. He, he bought these two baggage cars in 1969, brought them here to the museum. He was a member, so they allowed him to bring it. He had a collection of things. He was very big in toy tra toys, metal trains, uh, metal toys. And uh, that's what he wanted to display. But a lot of the things he had were his personal collection. The camera on the right there is obviously very personal. Um, it's been sitting kind of unattended for a long time. Uh, I, about a year and a half ago, decided that uh, someone needed to take care of it and make it displayable for the visitors. So I started with the north car, and we'll take you in there and you'll see it. This car, nothing's really been done with it other than I would like to light the cabinets. I think by having uh, Some LED, LED, LED types, lights, yeah, 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 it's going to make them a yeah. lot better. So that's kind of where I'll move in the next couple of weeks. But because of my age, I've been here 30 years. And uh, 
I'm running out of steam. This is something I can still do. And uh, so let's, let's move on to the okay, other so car. Okay, so we're gonna go take or a look. Or you can take a well, picture all the way down okay. as you go. All right. Okay, so now we are in the north car of the Middleton collection. Okay. Okay, what, what I decided to do is all the things you see in here have always been in here. They've just been relocated from the east wall and the west wall. There's oh, very a nice, yeah, okay. There's a bell. I get it, yeah. Okay, here, this, I made this. Oh, the um, Prince Edward can is an amplifier. If the station master was stepped away from the key, he might hear an incoming okay. message. And so, so you got Prince Albert in the can? I have Prince Albert. Why don't you let him out? Yeah, why don't you, yeah, right, why don't you let him out, yeah. Um, the bell is from a steam engine. The kids can ring. Cool, very cool. And that's what's in the bag, is the signs that go with this to tell them. They can. This is a clatter gong, and it's mounted underneath the PE car. The motorman hits it with his foot, and as he clears, The idea is kids need to be able to see this stuff and touch it. This is a salesman's model of a quiet diamond. If you, you've heard diamonds, uh, trains running over, they're noisy. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, apparently someone thought this would be a great idea, is to create one that would be quiet. Cable so cars. We got a brake stand and we got a, uh, an, HL, control. an HL controller here. Yeah, and uh, this is LA Rail. That's not moving. Oh, okay. Um, so, Dave, if uh, anybody wants to uh, donate something or want to volunteer their time, who would they? How would they go about getting hold of uh, it? If they contact the bookstore, they can direct you to me. All right, so, so we're contact the Southern California Railway Museum bookstore. Yep. And say you want to talk to Dave Wolven and they'll put you in touch. That's about it. We're here on the uh, Kinnikati platform with Carson King. Uh, Carson, uh, we have a new summer schedule coming up. What's, what's that all about? Uh, we do have a new summer schedule coming up. Just with the heat that we get out here in Paris, California, it's not comfortable to operate locomotives during the heat of the day all the time or the streetcars. It's also not necessarily the best safety-wise for all those things to be operating in yeah. the intense heat. So coming up in July, we'll start on Saturdays. We'll have evening operations, ideally trains departing at 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 p.m. And then on Sundays, just mornings, 9 a.m. till noon or 1 o'clock. It's not to say other things won't be running some Saturday mornings in case some operators want to come out Saturday mornings and operate, but for the most part, our established schedule starting in July and at least through August, Saturday evenings and Sunday mornings. Thank you. And is, uh, is the track work that's coming up going to affect the mainline or the mainline electrics? Yes, it will affect mainline electrics in that we probably won't have one. It's still up in the air depending on how I can switch and make space in the back and where I store the train, whether it's stored here or stored somewhere else a little okay. bit. It's a lot of coordination to get it mainline. It's not undoable, but it takes some other coordination. So there's a good chance that we might not have a mainline electric. And is there anything else new that's going on or anything you want to add? Uh, we're always looking for more volunteers. So if you're interested, uh, check into the bookstore, uh, become a member. And on the back of your membership, you can fill out everything you're interested in and we'll get you on the email list to get you started volunteering. If you want to drive the locomotives and volunteer or run the streetcars, yeah, that's how you get started. All right, well, that's how I got started. Thanks, Carson. You're welcome. Well, that's another episode of Museum News. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like to uh, become a member of the Southern California Railway Museum, contact the museum bookstore. And here come the bloopers. We are here with... So we are, we are here on the... I see, I just make... Oh yeah, walking. no, I know. That's, that's, so that's we are fine. here on the Pinnacotti platform with... The microphone. I got the microphone, but this, this doesn't work. Can I call you Heel? Yeah, call me Heel. Hi, Heel. Hi. Oh, yeah. There we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Tales from... Quick, Mel, give us something for the bloopers. Go.